Okay, I'm going to try this with uh, my copy of the bingo card for Horror Mayhem up on the screen. Man, I hope the audio is working. I don't know why I'm saying that, because if the audio doesn't work, I'm not going to redo it, so you'll never know that I was trying to do it. And people who are doing Horror Mayhem know that you can play along with this bingo card. I've got to get to my list of stuff, though, because I did a full screen record reading. So I'm going to mark off. I think this is the draw tool. Yeah, I'm going to mark off the ones that I... that I've already got. So Killer Animals, I read uh, a couple of Killer Animal books. So I did a video about those, about the nest and the pack. Um, and let's see what else I can do here. Uh, graphic novel, I got some recommendations uh, on that. Thank you very much for the people who recommended them. I'll do uh, credit for that. Um, Universal Monsters, I'm gonna read I haven't started yet, but I'll read that Dracula, Kim Newman Dracula book. Cult Horror. I have an idea for that, but I haven't read it yet. Indie Horror. Haven't done it yet. Personal Horror. Well, I'm going to, and this is going to count for a lot of things. I think you can double up. I'm going to double up. For Personal Horror, I've got the Engstrom uh, novels or novellas that I read. Um, where are they? Oh my goodness. When Darkness Loves Us. That's very personal. The first one, the first novella, When Darkness Loves Us. Very personal thing that happens to this poor woman. Haunted House, I read... Um, man, there's going to be a lot of ums in this because I'm trying to think of titles. Uh, Familiar Spirit by Lisa Tuttle. Horror Adjacent. Uh, I'm going to call The Conjure Woman Horror Adjacent because it does concern folk tales and witchcraft and things like that. That's by Charles W. Chestnut. Um, green Cover. I don't know why this is, uh, I wonder if there's something significant about this green cover. I missed it in any of the introduction videos because I know this was a, a big mark here. So if it's a special one for some reason. I am reading a book with a green cover now. Just let me get to my Kindle app. Just let me get there. Let me get there. There's actually a couple with green covers. The Nest has a fairly green cover. No, oh, I don't have it on this. Okay. Um, what's the name of the book I'm reading? Uh, I'm just going to count the nest for now because I don't want to give away this other book yet because I'm probably going to finish it tonight. It's a very cool book that I want to probably end up talking about because there's some stuff worth talking about on that. But I will count for that. I'll count um, the the um, the green cover of the nest. That's pretty green. Part of it's green. Okay. Translated horror. You know, I should, uh, I should be able to come up with some translated horror, but I haven't got any yet. Or maybe some of those short stories I read in that big collection. No, I don't think I got to them yet. You know, I was gonna read the prompt this week is for Hollywood horror. I talked about this in my last video, "Sex and Violence in Hollywood" by Ray Garten. I think I'm gonna bail on that. I'm not going to count it as a, a DNR because I only read the first sentence. I read it during my last video. And afterwards I thought, oh my God. So I'm not in the mood for something quite that trashy right now. I do have another option though. I have two other options, um, including this one. Uh, oh, where's my, okay. Um, religious horror. I'm going to count the Angstrom, uh, the second Angstrom uh, short novel in Dar When Darkness Loves Us for that because there is um, some issues in there. There's some ideological issues between the married couple and Beauty is a different uh, 
understandings of this power that that the mother character has in in the book. I don't want to talk too much about it, but I and there's and they're at odds. Oh, here's another green cover. You know, you can always count on Gutenberg to come through. So I'm going to count that for that. Have I doubled up any yet? I, I think it's allowed, but anyway. Uh, what have I got? I guess I haven't really read that much horror. Let's look how much horror I've even read for my massive horror month that I thought I was going to have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven novels completed, and and one I uh, one do not did not finish, which would have been good because that would have covered a bunch of my categories. Um, that was the Ghost Rider by Ismail Kadari, and one possible that I decided was not worth pursuing. So what else we got though? Um, where's my mouse now? My mouse keeps disappearing. Extreme horror. Ooh, well, I'm going to count. Um, there's plenty of stuff I could count in there. I read a lot of extreme horror already. The Angstrom books. The Dead Hours of the Night collection by Lisa Tuttle. The, other, the second Lisa Tuttle book I read has a lot of very extreme stories, especially uh, the ones I like the best. Psychological horror, kidnappings. I'm not going to have any kidnapping cozy horror I would like to have a suggestion on that I know that's a that's a loaded phrase right now people um, this thing doesn't have a timer on it I just had to check to make sure it's really recording oh is there cannibalism in when darkness loves us I can't remember well, no, not really. There's gross eating stuff, but uh, but cozy horror is a um, much maligned term that that real serious horror people are like mad about now that it's come out. Just like some people are mad about cozy mysteries and all that. I mean, who cares? Like, just read your books, just enjoy your books. It's not an endurance test. So, I, if anybody has an interest, is a uh, um. Any suggestions of cozy horror, I'd, I'd be interested in, in hearing them. Based on true story, I'm going to double up things from there because uh, both novellas in When Darkness Loves Us were... No, not both of them, but the second one was based on a uh, account, a crime that she had read about and thought was pretty horrible, but her... Her finished novel it does not bear very much relationship to it. Folk horror. See the Angstrom book account for those two. Ghost. I um, yeah, I read a bunch of ghost stories. Those uh, Edith Wharton ghost stories. And um, some of the others in that giant ass book of, of horror that I read. Those are all ghost stories. I, I'll... Uh, I'll uh, Single out They by Rudyard Kipling for that. Which is cryptid. Um, I can't even think of an option for that. It's a very common category now, but I can't think of any that I've got. You know, one of my other rules on this is just not to buy anything, just to dig out. And I'm going to do this for all the coming events. And we have sport in. Uh, this summer we have adventure fiction still going on we have June on the Range which is uh, westerns uh, you should be into that Faceless I hope um, I've got a few westerns to read there's a science fiction event coming up in July there's Garb August which I have at least a hundred books I could read for Garb August and I'm going to have really a lot of fun with that so cannibalism elemental horror um Folk horror, I think I have a few things that can come for that. Home Invasion, I don't know if I have any of those. Cryptic Cosmic Horror, that's like Lovecraft and stuff. And I have plenty of uh, 
plenty of stuff that can work for that, like, you know, Frank Belknap Long and all kinds of people, Clark Ashton Smith, all kinds of things. Um, aliens, you could probably use uh, Cthulhu for that too. Curses. Dolls, always a great option. I love scary doll stories. There's a great one by, early one by Agatha Christie. Um, which is a really good horror story. She was a very uh, diverse writer. I mean, diverse, much more than people think of, you know, her, her sort of, uh, her logical lock, closed circle, people call them locked room, but they're actually mostly closed circle mysteries. But she wrote a lot of stuff, especially early on. She wrote like a, a ton of different uh, genres and subgenres. Clowns. I had some stuff with Ray, some more Ray Garten, some more, I'm really off the idea of Ray Garten, rest in peace, uh, because of the gross beginning of that Hollywood sex and horror story. But I think there's probably some killer clowns in there. He's kind of, does kind of like, kind of, you know. Holiday, maybe I'll read one of the Christmas books by Dickens if I get to it. Evil Children, I've uh, read some stuff with uh, children, but they're not evil yet. Techno, Probably don't have anything on there. And dystopian horror. Those two I don't think I'm going to get. But, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine squares uh, checked off. And one universal monster coming. I'll get at least two or three more. So let's cut it there. If I can find the off button.